I've been really curious about the Dan Electro Spring King for a while now. I've also really been meaning to do a video about fixing broken guitar pedals. Sometimes things just have a way of working out. That first guitar there, that's my Reverend Jetstream, and I set the pedal for lots and lots of reverb. And I thought about doing a whistling solo on that track, but instead I opted for that pink parts caster with some tremolo as my second guitar. <laughs> I ran the vocals through here as well, but it's not really meant for vocals, and it kind of came out distorted and kind of weird. It's six by nine and a half inches. The Dan Electro Spring King is a wonderfully unique pedal. For starters, I mean, just look at it. It's got a real spring tank in here to help with the reverb sound, although I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. It's also using a PT2399 delay chip to help fill out the reverb sound a little and add a little bit of pre-delay, giving us a nice surfy slapback kind of sound. The pedal's got three very simple knobs. The first one here is labeled volume and it controls the amount of signal that's sent into the spring tank. It's there, but it's subtle. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. But up next, there's a tone knob, and it's a tone knob, which adjusts the frequencies of the reverb portion of the signal. And lastly, there's a reverb knob, and this controls the overall effect mix. We've also got a kick pad down here on the front of the pedal, which we can use to apply some percussive dynamics to our physical spring tank. I'm gonna let you in on another little secret. There's nothing special about this kick pad area. There's nothing going on underneath it. And up top here, this is just a stuck on rubber oval. So you can kick the pedal anywhere you want or even around the pedal.
there aren't that many pedals that actually encourage you to kick it. And maybe that's why the listing for this said, works, but is very temperamental. I'll use it for periods of time, and then eventually the signal will cut out or it will feed back. Could be a simple fix, but I'm not sure. So the pedal shows up, I plug it in, and it works. And I was actually really disappointed because I was specifically looking for broken pedals. But after just a few minutes of rocking out, boom, light goes out, no sound passes at all, we've got ourselves a broken pedal. One of the first things I noticed was that the seller shipped this with a battery hooked up. We're not gonna use this because we're plugged into DC power. And I bet the battery is dead, and I bet the battery is messing with the whole power situation, so I take the battery out and boom, pedal works again. Simplest fix ever. But then I measured the battery and it tested just fine. And then a few minutes later, pedals out again. All right, so now it's time to open this thing up. And here it is, here's the spring tank, here's the main board. And right away, there's two things jumping out at me. Let's see if you can spot them. Well, the first thing is this jack right over here. Notice how it's at an angle. It's actually pressing up against the board. I did a video about not breaking your pedals a couple weeks ago, and I mentioned how it's bad to tighten loose jacks from the outside without looking at what's going on on the inside first. That's why. I also talked about how it's important to not leave 9 volt batteries hooked up if you're not using them, but I guess someone's not a subscriber. And that might not be what's causing our problems, but it's certainly not helping, so we're definitely going to fix that. The next thing I noticed was this JST plug, which is just slightly askew. Remember how the seller said that it cuts out or it makes a feedback noise? A loose connection right back there would make this lose power, but if it were just loose enough and kind of bouncing around in place, it might cause intermittent blips of power, which is bad, especially for PT2399s. You see, if you power cycle a PT2399 chip before everything around it has had a chance to de-energize, when it comes back up, there's not enough resistance on pin number six, which is the pin that sets the frequency, and it just, for lack of a better word, it locks up. It's documented in a little more detail on this page here on the PT2399 pin 6 hack. I tell you, the internet has everything. I'm betting that a locked up delay could probably sound a whole lot like feedback. And I tried for a while jiggling it around. I couldn't get it to make that feedback sound. So I just pushed it back into place and the pedal worked for a few minutes. So now I'm taking an even closer look in here and you see these capacitors here and here and you see this space up here where a capacitor used to be. That's because as I was poking around in here looking for more loose connections, this guy just popped right out of place like a loose tooth and it came loose so easily that I could tell that one side had already probably broken off and it was just kind of held in place with friction and hope. Surface mount electrolytic capacitors in a pedal with a kick plate, maybe not the best idea. Now this is a 220 microfarad capacitor rated at 16 volts. I don't have any of those, but I do have a 25 volt and that's nine better. I'm going to make sure that the polarity matches, lining up the markings, and then just quickly solder this into place. It's not pretty, but electrons don't care. And I'm gonna let you in on another little secret. All of that was 100% true. All the false hope and red herrings, although a few scenes were recreated to get better video. So if you notice the capacitor was already slightly askew when I first opened up the pedal, no you didn't. And with that fix, the pedal was just fine and it has been ever since, happily ever after. A little bit of troubleshooting and soldering in a five cent part makes my day. We've got ourselves a deal. And we're towards the end of the video, but I've got one more secret for you. 
We already know that the pedal is combining the PT2399 delay with the analog spring tank to give us this super drippy, rootin' tootin' ricochet spaghetti western effect, right? And it is undeniably cool. For that bit that I just played, the spring tank was completely disconnected. You're probably about to jump to a conclusion, and you really shouldn't. And here's why. I'm playing this on a desk at a pretty low volume because normally when I get the time to record all this stuff, everyone else is in bed. But if I take the Spring King and connect the input to nothing and just put the pedal near my PV Classic 30 set to two, here's the dry signal coming straight out of the amp. And here's that same audio with the output of the Spring King mixed in. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. You really get the most out of this pedal when it's in a real space with real amps making real sound waves. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that opens up a whole lot of possibilities. I also think there's a reason the Demeter Reverberator uses two sets of spring tanks and runs at 24 volts, where the Spring King takes nine volts and barely pulls 40 milliamps. Whatever's hitting the input of that tank is doing its best, but it's the sound in the room that's really gonna carry it. There are lots of reverb pedals that do the spring thing really well. Probably one of my all-time favorites is the Boss Fender Reverb FRV-1. And this is all digital, so those really nice algorithms are out there in a number of pedals and even software plugins. Though I guess it's a little bit harder to kick a plugin. But really, if you like the sound of this pedal and you like the way it looks and the way it picks up on what's happening in the room all around it, I stand by what I said at the top of the video. This is a wonderfully unique pedal. And if this is your kind of thing, you should know that it's also my kind of thing. I try to put out a new video every week or so. So please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss one and I'll catch you on the next one.